Hey guys, thank you for checking out Bucked Up. Just before we start, I would love if you'd hit the subscribe button, like, share the video. We have new episodes coming out every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And starting in the new year, check out Wrapped Up exclusively on Vivo. This episode is sponsored by Exotic Roots Hydro, which I have to give a huge shout out to. They are a huge supporter of the podcast, and I'm really happy to be working with them. If you're ever in Rochester, New York, and you need to learn about any of your hydroponic needs, go to their shop. You can follow them at Exotic Roots Hydro on Instagram. Shout out their whole team. They have an amazing venue space. Uh, they're going to be putting on tons of events. Just make sure to follow Exotic Roots Hydro on Instagram. And if you're ever in Rochester, definitely stop by. Let's get back into it. It was at this moment that he knew. He bucked up. Now he fucked 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 up. Now you have fucked up. I, I have done stand-up. I actually tried it for the first time uh, right before the shutdown. Um, and and since time. then, I, I never got the chance to go back up. Oh, really? How did it go? Do you want the truth or a lie? No, I want the uh, truth. It, I want the truth, one hundred percent. Nothing but the truth. I bombed, man, but uh, yeah, I think it, it's it's hard not to. I I was very misguided. I jumped up, and it was sort of in in the Trump era, and I did a Trump era related joke that I thought would go over well, and it did not. So, uh, oh, I feel you. Yeah, did people hype you up? Like, did were they saying who you were? Did you just go up like as a rando? I actually I purposely I didn't tell anybody I didn't uh, invite anybody because I wanted to see if I could actually just do it like completely unknown kind of thing. So there was like 15, 20 people there. And yeah, they I, I think it was one of those things where I was trying to make myself the butt of the joke, but they were too nervous to laugh. So it was it was yeah. a strange thing. And also, you how long have you done it? Uh do you want the real answer or do you want the lie? <laughs> the lie. No, <laughs> no. For, honestly, I've been doing it maybe like two and a half to three years seriously, like no breaks. Even during quarantine, I would find mics and drive anywhere to do it. Like I but the first two times I ever did it, I used a fake ID and I got into the comedy store like oh, wow. it's a 21 over club. So like. Literally, the first time I ever did stand up was in the belly room on Kill Tony. Like, you can watch it. I have it on my YouTube page. But That's I was crazy. like 18 years old. Uh, wow. And it's 60 seconds. So, of course, you know, it's 60 seconds. And the first time I did really well, like, first time, 60 seconds. Right. Uh, it was in the belly room. Jamar Neighbors, uh, rest mm. in peace, Brody Stevens was there. Like, it was, it was really crazy. And then the second time, I, six months later, I go back out get picked for kill tony again it's now in the main room have you ever been to the oh. comedy store i haven't but i can basically picture every corner of it from yeah, videos yeah. And, and pods so i'm it's in the main room and i was like cocky i hadn't i had only done one set in between those times <laughs> i was like i had already done well like i'll go up and it's the main room it's sold out steve-o is the guest and you can Oof. watch this one too bomb my ass off like so bad steve-o yawns during my set like people <laughs> oh, no. like you know people are gonna go and find that uh and then i like didn't really take it seriously because that hurt so much for a little bit and then my uh senior year of college is when i kind of was like you know what fuck it like i'm about to graduate i need to if i'm serious i'm gonna need to take it serious so that's when i started doing it well, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a time where, where you have to take it to the next level, man. Yeah, I mean, I always thought about doing it. And I don't know, I, I think it's one of those things where it, it just didn't it hasn't bit me yet. But like the bug hasn't bit me yet. But I think it might be because I haven't gotten a really good laugh from a crowd yet. What what has been holding you back thus far? Because it's not like you haven't been dipping your toe into the comedy field. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I think it's, it's just one of those things like where the lockdown threw me out of it for so long. And, and I also, I've been hesitant. I mean, even before that, like before that, Oh yeah. yeah. What, what helped me back in general? Yeah. I think I, it was just you know, nerves, dude. Irish. Yeah. Yeah. Nerves. But I was just saying how he knew you from the church days of like early, early, which is so funny. Cause that's when I was in it, but I wasn't like, I wasn't a fan like that. Like I would listen right. to it and I'm, like that's me with rap. It's funny that I'm a comedian, but you're like you've been in it. You know the comedy 
world like deep yeah i mean i I started sort of getting involved in in the whole like listening and watching the the la scene when i was like uh, 10 11 and then by the time i was 16 i started working at a comedy club out here which is at it's a we we're in a random city but we have one of the biggest malls in the world um so we get a lot of like cool comics that would come so i started working there and i think that kind of messed it up for me though like the idea of going up at my work uh, cause that was like the main place to do it sort of threw me off. So I, I think it was just, it was just a weird thing of, of not really knowing what to talk about and, and being a little on the younger side resistance. Yeah, I, I get yeah. like, no, but I feel that I needed to, when I did it, when I used my fake ID to get in and when I like first got into it, I didn't know what I was going to talk about. Like I had to kind of live a little. And I lived a little too much during my college years. So then like, <laughs> oh, I had an experience to talk about afterwards. You kind of do need to do that. That's the thing. It's kind of hard to talk about like just like 16. I was like working at Target before that and just living with my parents. There's nothing very comical about that. So, yeah, that life experience, it helps, man. Do you think you have like stuff to talk about now? I do. But honestly, I, I, I think like if I'm being tr really just, you know, frank about it i don't think i i enjoy it as much as i th i think i i would or i thought i would i, I don't know I, I i feel like i don't really need obviously if you're doing a podcast like you, you want some sort of attention but i don't know if i need attention like right in front of me it, like irl in the moment yeah. um i can kind of deal with like putting it out and it kind of feels like covering my face and, and whatever happens with it happens and however people react they'll do it on their time but I don't know, just just the the face to face thing is is odd. But I mean, I'll probably give it another shot. It's just it's a weird life being a comic, man. And and you know this, you know, like it's 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 a very a lot of isolation too. Like once you get on the road, it's it's a very particular life. It one hundred percent is. It's funny because you just posted that thing uh, the other day on Instagram, which for people listening, it doesn't help. But you were talking about like <clears throat> like grinding too hard. Right. Like, you know, like pushing too hard that you like tire yourself out. But I yeah. feel like that is the life of the comedian. Like my mental illness is I have like an addiction to the grind. I have an addictive personality all around. But like it's useful to push into comedy and podcasting, but definitely stand up because it's always like, all right, what's next? What's fucking next? What's fucking next? That's the thing, man. And it, it never and, pays off. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, well, <laughs> for most people, it doesn't. Right. And I, I really, truly believe that for something like this, especially like you really have to love it. Like, I mean, if I didn't love podcasting as much as I do, I would have quit a long time ago, you know, and, and I think that I may not love stand up in that same way. And honestly, I think if you don't, I think somebody else belongs up there, you know, and I'm, I'm sort of OK with that, you know, but. I've always found that life doesn't really go the way I, I, you know, a person expects it to go. And I always saw myself as being a comic at this age and maybe the path was different, but it's, I, I definitely enjoy watching it maybe more than I enjoy doing it at this point. Yeah. But you are doing crazy stuff and you have been able to do a lot of like really awesome stuff and carve your own lane at a young, how old are you now? 23 yeah 23 i'm 24 so like you're younger than me it's like oh god damn like that's really cool what you've been able to do and maybe stand up isn't a part of that but it's comedy definitely is you know thanks man no i appreciate that yeah it's been it's been a lot of fun and sort of just getting to kind of like peek behind the curtain of like the comedy world the music world it's really just been a fascinating experience it's like it's so much intricacies in these worlds it's it's really something well, it's funny how it all works out because I've known you, you know, just through being who you are for a long time. But then I also knew you through Irish because he mm. kind of compares us a little, you know, he'd be like, oh, you have to meet this guy, Cassius. You remind me a lot of him and the things we talk about or whatever, the, the way we just the grind. And then when you I could see that, man. And then when you commented on the Conway uh, episode. It was just so funny. It was like the perfect timing of like, oh, my God. And you commented on my thing. It's cool that we finally get to talk. Yeah. By the way, man, like I really meant it when I said great work like that was uh, that was really so, like, what was it like for you? I, I, don't, I don't mean to take control of your show and interview you, but like, was it weird for you to have Conway opening up like that? Like that was insane. It was weird. It was crazy because like 
later i know like going back i was told that conway even told a close friend of us that like he didn't like me when he first met me mm. so like <laughs> knowing that now it even puts a different perspective on it but i've known him for a little bit i've known him since like 2017 and then i guess he had watched a few of my episodes and liked how i did it i guess mm -hmm. and so we were supposed to do the podcast at like 3 p.m and then he keeps pushing it back you know keeps pushing mm. it back and it's now i'm not joking it's now like 10 p.m oh and we get a text and he's like from his manager and he's like hey conway's doing a club appearance come to the club oh, and yeah. we're like all right i guess we're dropping everything because something that i've learned from interviewing all of conway's guys is like he likes to test people so i was like okay. i think i think this is a test like i because he right. doesn't do interviews especially with someone as like at that point i had like 700 subscribers you know like right. especially and so we get to the club and uh the first thing he asked me is uh what type of questions are you gonna ask me that's the first mm. thing we're in the vip section we're up on stage of this like <laughs> packed out club and i'm like i just want to ask you how you do it you know like because that's mm. what i'm interested in and he kind of like chilled then and then oh, okay. we partied we got drunk and nice. then we did that interview at like 2 a.m after the club i know that was a long winded story but like no that know, that puts a lot of context to it though that's so cool yeah and there was a lot that went on that i i'm not gonna like go into on camera that caused him to be like upset that night not with me but just like things going on but like mm -hmm. that's why it became like a very personal interview you know it it was 2 a.m after a night at the club together man that is that is that must have been so surreal you know it, it it's it, and it's interesting because i've been kind of following like conway's like sort of what he's been saying about the business and just one of these dudes like i just wish he could see himself the way somebody like you or i sees him for mm -hmm. just a moment like i've truly and i hope he has because he deserves it man like these guys are such machines and and you know like their fans really love them you know yeah but I don't know if you feel this way, and maybe this is why you don't like stand up, is because after talking to him, because I've talked to him, but after like that conversation face to face, I like understood him more because mm. everything that goes well for me makes me like less happy because I just want more. Like I just want to be the best. Like what he was saying, I feel, and I'm at such like a minuscule scale of that where it's like, everything that's good you're in the eye of the storm so you just kind of want to keep doing more until you're the best but you're never the best you know it's like Dude, it's so tough because you've interviewed some of the craziest people ever like honestly like from Thanks, fucking the, uh, fucking the people from kiss to fucking danny brown to joey diaz to like it's crazy i mean to countless but you probably feel it you're like all right what's next like well, yeah, at times. And, and I know what you mean. And, you know, like you brought up the, the thing about talking about grinding too hard. And, and that kind of goes with this theme. Like I had to find things, whether it's to do with the, the game of podcasting or not, that were outside of it to sort of keep me happy to keep me going. Because if I didn't have that, I felt like the opposite was just being on a hamster wheel and constantly being defined by, you know, whatever the latest achievement is or the latest views are. And yeah. it's like, you know, it's almost like like you watch Sopranos and they tell the mob guys, like, you're only as good as your last envelope. Podcasting, like, you're only as good as your latest episode. And, and it's not like dropping an album as an artist where you drop an album and you have a year and a half off that record. You got a week maybe off your episode before it's like, OK, what's next? That's old news. Yeah. So it's like it's so tough. And yeah, so I, I had to really readjust my thinking and try to find different sort of checks and balances to, to know that I'm still moving in the right direction. That isn't necessarily based on that. Cause it, it is addictive too. Like you said, it's, it's addictive to try to keep getting that and topping yourself. One. Yeah. The numbers like YouTube studio makes it so hard. And I also, it's funny that I'm complaining and people are like, oh, you know, he's complaining about whatever, but I also know what I need to do. It's kind of like I heard a diet once described is like you need to figure something that doesn't have an end goal like you need to figure mm. something that'll always work like a diet isn't right. something you do and then there's like a, oh i got to the end 
it's right. like that's no, that makes a lot of sense it's a continuous do. thing exactly and i think oh and i haven't been focusing on like my health so that's probably why i'm not happy with my other stuff like right if my mind's not in order then probably like or if my body's not in order my mind's not going to be order and vice versa exactly yeah and it is tough because it and and it's taught me a lot about myself too because for example like i've never tried like any sort of table games at a casino any form of gambling uh, once i turned of age and the reason for that was uh, every time i put up a podcast i feel a gambling rush because when you think about it you're putting it up it's either going to like do really well and do great for you or you're going to put it up get two views and look kind of silly and it's it's that gamble I found so addictive and literally through 21, I was, I would like do this and be caught in the cycle and staring at the YouTube studio. And I just realized, man, it's yeah, it's, but it, it, it teaches you about yourself. Cause I realized with, with the addiction to that, if I was to start, you know, really gambling, you know, I'd be screwed right now. So it, yeah. it teaches you. So you do stuff on your own, but you also work for do stuff for watch mojo too, right? Is yeah. That, so is the that... podcast over there? Yes. Is that nice to then give kind of away a little bit of like, ah, it's not all on my back right now. Yeah, no, it's nice. You know, the, the thing with that show is it is such a unique company um, because everybody who does any form of hosting or narrations of that company, uh, that's not all they do. They end up doing a lot more from like programming, writing, whatever the case may be. So it, it's not quite as straightforward as maybe it would be at another company because usually at another company they maybe give you a script they'd book the guests um, and you just do it whereas us like that's what we do you know that's basically our role but in terms of i mean the nicest part is having a, a major media company to sort of give that cosign and and to sort of take it to the next level i mean you know th this is technically my first real job in the media business and you know i started when i was like 11 so, you know, it's a long time. And uh, yeah, it's just, it was really nice to get the recognition. Um, and also it sort of gives you a little more freedom with who to reach out to. Cause like you're saying, you know, you reach out as a random podcaster, you know, the chances are not that great that you're going to get interviews, but when you have a, a company name behind you, it gives you more opportunities. So it's been really nice. And yeah, it's, it's been nice not to have to scratch and claw as much, you know, it's, and people yeah. to be like, who is this guy? You know? Yeah, because that's something that I think I deal with, like in the future, something that I I'm going to have to. But I also think people who are creating, there's two avenues. And I think more people go to what you say, where it's like, yes, if you have, if you're going to grow, you kind of have to build out a little bit. You need, oh, to, you need to ask for help. You or do, not ask for help, but have help. You really do. And that's something I resisted forever. Like I always wanted it to be me building my YouTube channel and me be the company, like not have help from a company, become the company. But I mean, sure, that's doable in a sense, but it, it makes a lot more sense to, to build with people and whether it's people in your city or people in your network. And yeah, that was a piece I think I was missing a little bit, like trying to do it on an island. I don't think that's the way to do it. You, you know? also live up in Canada. You yeah, I, I, might as well. I live on a area. frozen island. So it is pretty hard, I guess, then to build for you. Like, as I said, I can drive. So, like, I just kind of drive everywhere and try to put myself in the right situations. But you did it all remote all through the... At 11? Is that when you said you started interviewing at 11? Yeah, yeah, I started. And, and yeah, it's been basically remote. I mean, the good thing about being where I'm at is it's there's like four cities in Canada that get a ton of concerts and mine is one of the four. Okay, so luckily, right. yeah, luckily it's, it's pretty good. Like it's better. Um, but I mean, where I used to live in the East coast of Canada, it was to the point where like, if we had a concert happening, you know, a year from that date, it would literally be on the news a year before that we were having like a kiss concert or whatever. Whereas in, you know, Boston, whatever, you just have a kiss concert and that's it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, definitely. But once I moved to Edmonton, there was a, a ton more festivals and a ton more opportunities. Uh, and then I started doing photography at a concert venue and sort of working my way up there. And then I ended up working at the concert venue. So I just I tried to do that in the comedy club and just surround myself with every little nook and cranny of entertainment because it is a lot to do it at the young age. Like what made you start? You know, I think it was, first of all, having a super big mouth. 
Uh, and second of all, being a fan of Joe Rogan, you know, I think just seeing Rogan, I was like, I remember I put it on at 10 or 11 and it felt like getting to sit at the adult table that I would always get kicked away from. Um, and then, yeah, I just, I listened to that and I was like, what if I could do this, you know? And I just yeah. figured I'd give it a try. How was that then like getting a shout out from him or like getting recognized? Dude, I mean, that was crazy. I, I mean, I remember when that first happened. Yeah, I, I it was one of the craziest days of my life. He, he called me a prodigy at the time. Uh, it was obviously put, you know, I, he put wind in my sails, but that's what those guys did. They, they really put wind in my sails and especially Red Band and Joey. They, there was really nothing in it for them. You know, like I was completely unknown and they just decided to, to do something for this kid. And yeah, it was one of the biggest things. And then I got the chance to do a mini interview with Rogan on the Adam Carolla show. So like I started listening to Rogan and Adam on his show. And then here I was talking to these dudes on a podcast and I was lit. I was lit physically sweating <laughs> on the phone with these guys. It, it was, it yeah. was intense. Did you feel ready at that moment? No, no, <laughs> I, I didn't feel ready. It was, uh, How old were you at that point? I was 14. <sighs> yeah. Wow. Damn. And Rogan, I mean, he, he, he wasn't, the monolithic figure he is today but he was still freaking huge and it's been crazy to watch rogan be like a cult guy like a cult following to where he is now i mean talk yeah, about mean, insane he's the reason i am doing what i'm doing i mean it's funny hearing you describe your thing i mean mine was when i was 16 and i got in a really bad hockey accident and i had to lay oh. in a dark room for a month and i couldn't listen to music was it a concussion? Yeah, a level five out of five concussion. I just uh, got over that, man. So you know, and I did it. I didn't even play hockey. I just did it to impress an ex-girlfriend. Oh, like, no. In a month in, I got in this accident, and I couldn't listen to music. I, all I could do was listen to people talk. Like, that's what my yeah. doctor said. Like, no music. You could, And I just listened to, like, Rogan's podcast and comedy mm. and shit. And when I came out of it, I was like... Oh, there's people who actually like follow their dreams and fucking yeah. do their shit. And it's, you know, it's funny because that's then what put me on the path I'm on today. And it's funny hearing you describe it as like they gave this kid a chance because mm -hmm. that's how I feel with if you g rewind to when you asked me how I felt about the Conway interview. Shit, I'm 24 right. years old. Like, I'm not a kid, but I felt like, damn, like he gave the kid a chance. Like, he gave me a chance, you know, that was, he yeah. didn't have to do that. These guys don't have to give, you know, anything me, like exactly. They, they have people wanting to do shit for them all the time. So for them to do it really does mean something, but shows that you're on the right path. I think. I totally agree. You know, and, and it's all, all, you know, for you, what you do with it too. And I think these guys get it. Like they know that, them partnering with you may not like be the thing that you know makes you a household name but it's about what you do with that you know and and yeah it's it's really it's a blessing when someone at that level passes that along it says a lot about their character and it's it is like it's the the pushing too hard because i do the ro i do three episodes a week just to get to That's my a lot that, just to get to my ten thousand hours quicker like I just want to, I don't really, that's why I don't care. I try not to care about the views because it's like, I'll put so many out that it's hard to like pay attention to it because right. I just want to meet cool people. I'm not trying to like ride off of one thing. I just want to grind. That's what the Rogan style was, was just grinding. 100%. And do you just have to, like a spiritual yeah. connection? Like, have you ever done, this is a, a Rogan question, but have you ever done DMT? Like, do you have? I haven't done DMT, no. Have you done mushrooms? Um, yeah, I've played around with it, but you know, I'm I'm more of a. I mean, for it's legal, you know, decriminalized in Canada, but I, I'm more of a micro guy. I've never really done the the full gauntlet with a psychedelic. Okay, I was just wondering because, like, I did DMT and then I started the podcast, which is Ooh. the most 
Rogan thing in the entire That's world. So Rogan. Do, <laughs> he definitely made you want to start. To do, to do DMT and start a podcast. It's like <laughs> <laughs> I just need to fucking start bow hunting or doing MMA. Yeah, seriously, so eating deer meat and the whole exactly. nine. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, you know, I wasn't sure if you have, and that gave me a big spiritual connection too, which I think energy is a big part of. Is it as as I mean, okay, how how did it compare to how you thought it would be when you did DMT? I thought it was it was exactly how I I mean, shit. I met Buddha like you know, yeah. like, <laughs> like Rogan talks about his obsession with Buddha. Like I had never had any connection to Buddha before that, but the first time I did it, I met Buddha. It was a or I saw Buddha, and uh, yeah, it was a it was a very crazy experience. And I was in like a dark place, and then I was like, you know what? I just, if I'm not gonna do it now, then I'm never gonna do it. That uh, the war of art. You know, oh. everything I do is like kind of and I do it in the rap world. So no one really knows the Rogan inspiration that I take. Right. But it's like everything I do is Rogan inspired. I just kind of put it into the rap world. And that's cool. You know, and, and the rap world is is tough to get a foot into, man. Like even with all the stuff I've done in rock and such, I'm just dipping my toe into rap in the last six months. And it's like starting completely from scratch. Like they don't really care how many rock stars you've interviewed it's not really relevant to them so it's yeah it, yeah that's the thing about music man like each genre it's it's like you have to climb that little ladder you know how did you meet danny because i was just out uh with danny for thanksgiving for bruiser thanksgiving oh you were there nice yeah, yeah danny yeah. um i think he, he saw me on joey or something like that um so we he, we got in touch on twitter and we've dm'd a bit and we tweeted back and forth a bit we're gonna do like an actual formal like podcast eventually um but he, that that was another dude who just like wanted to put some wind in my sails he basically he tweeted it out he was like you know we'll put something together he called me young legend he said he knew who i was which shocked the shit out of me you know because i i mean i'm a i think danny brown is a seriously underrated rapper man like when you listen to the songs on triple x like Pac blood die like a rock star that's DNA, some incredible yeah, like, dude oh my, yeah insane yeah i know that's i was just i just had jade uh jade gomez on shout out editor at pace magazine who's like a really good friend of danny's on last night and we just like nerded out about that album i met her at the bruiser thanksgiving oh that's cool that must have been a sick event man it was crazy doing mushrooms with Danny. It was wild. It was Dude, that, that's a whole podcast in and of itself right there. <laughs> I know, but I don't know how you feel, or I guess you do your stuff through, but it's like, I also don't push it. Like, I think that's, I, I never push anything like things will in terms happen, of getting like, a guest. Yeah. Things will happen when they happen. Like I, I, you know, I hate people who try to like weasel. That's why I think a lot of people, they think that weaseling is your way to do it. No. Yeah, it's definitely not. It, I think, you know, this is probably a, a, a too good of a tip to be given out to everybody, but Hey, let's, let's do it. We'll, we'll give it like, I think it's just about trying to make a case for what's in it for them. Because if you can really sort of examine a person, you can maybe see what you can offer them, even if they are much bigger in status than you or have more money than you. Like if you can't offer them like sort of concrete physical things, you can offer them maybe something else uh, in terms of um, sort of an emotional connection or something else. So I think it's, it's more about that than because you can be as persistent as you want. If somebody doesn't want to talk with you, that's sort of where it ends. Yeah, I think we yeah. should. I think we should say fuck it and get into the real knowledge. Like, I think we're mm -hmm. two people that if you're listening and you really want to, like, do it, this is a good this is good information to listen to, honestly. I um like what you just said like see what you can offer but also see what you can offer to the world like exactly like well uh, that's what people people make the mistake that they always try to see what they can do for themselves when it comes to the show and how to make themselves bigger and this and that but that's the thing you have to be worried about what you can offer to the people who love the genre of thing you're doing whether it's podcasting or rap music your your sole goal should be to make podcasting greater as a whole not necessarily to make yourself greater and bigger and when you do that naturally you will become bigger but it's it's kind of like the expression when you chase money it runs 
It's like if you yeah. chase to make yourself bigger, you're almost doing the opposite in a strange sense. Or happiness or anything or what we were talking about before. When you see an end goal, there's never going to be an end goal. You have to find exactly. things that kind of keep working. I created the reason this is a self-help podcast in quotation marks is because I started it because I was broken up with and the mm. girl I was dating was like said some real shit and was like, you really need to deal with these problems. And if you don't deal with these problems, you will mm. never be successful. So I started wow. this podcast to talk to people about dealing with those problems. Like, how mm. do I deal with these problems? And it kind of turned into this. And then it's like, oh, oh, shit, I get to talk to Conway about his problems. And I got to solve myself when I just wanted to, like, better myself. You know, uh, what's that saying? The most selfish, the most selfish thing you can do is help others. Right. OK, I, I think I've heard that somewhere, but I like that. <laughs> you know, like when that's you a help, tweet. <laughs> it's a tweet. I know I'm fucking drunk off of caffeine right now. I don't know what's happening. I'm... Dude, I, I could use being drunk off caffeine. I don't I'm not a caffeine guy. I'm a I'm a no. weed guy. I'm not really a drinker. I don't have a lot of caffeine, but I got this uh Ooh. espresso and it fucked me up. That looks deadly, man. That looks like a, a serious coffee mix right there. <laughs> so how okay, uh you started at eleven just because you heard Rogan, but like have you thought about like this is dumb, but like the spiritual reason why you at eleven decided to do this or were set on your journey? Hmm, that's a good question. You know, I think it's, well, the main thing that got me like putting two and two together, because like you'd think, what are you going to talk about? Well, I was a huge fan of, of Kiss, the band, and reading about their history, I read about how they had fan magazines. And if, if these people would stay home and slave away, making their own homemade magazines, and eventually they, they had an interview with Kiss and spread like a side of kiss that only the fans knew and i always thought that was so interesting it was like what if you could bypass like the typical flashy extra tv interview and and like really do something sort of by the people for the people that was really the, the main idea just to, to think that yeah it but why possible you? why me you know I, don't, I honestly don't think at the time i would have had the depth to know that answer Hey guys, this episode is sponsored by producer out of Syracuse, New York, Twist L's. He makes dope lo-fi beats. He has a bunch of tapes on Bandcamp that you should all check out. But uh, if you want to work or get amazing lo-fi beats, hit him up at lofi.lucifer on Instagram. That's L-O-F-I dot L-U-C-I-F-E-R. Uh, check him out. He's an amazing dude dude thankfully sponsors the podcast let's get back into it um you feel like I, you have it now or no no you know i honestly i would probably be lying if i said i knew exactly why i think it's i've always just wanted to connect with people i've always wanted to humanize people that that's another thing i i think when people are seen in a specific way whether it's rock star rapper whatever it is there's there's sort of connotations that come with that yeah. And, and my like bigger goal for this has always been to to look past that and like dig into the human being and why I like that. That's a good question. Maybe that's something I need to smoke DMT and think about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'd like the answer. <laughs> Do you have any siblings? Yeah, little sister. She's uh, she's 22. OK, did you uh, this is I'm not I don't mean to get all like there, but like were you because this is how I was like, I I guess I should speak. I was very. Like I was a lonely kid, like I could have had friends, I guess, but I just felt like I was so like the world around me doesn't understand. I just like cut myself off. I felt weird. I felt different. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's a big reason why I'm a stand up and why I'm a podcaster. Oh, I could see that. You and know, I don't know I if mean... you felt that same way uh, because I guess we'll go more is because like. When I'm on stage, oh, people are understanding my story. Like, and hmm. then when I'm interviewing people, it's like, oh, people I admire like me because we're having a conversation right. together. Like that's, you know. Totally. No, that, that I totally relate. I mean, being like a little rocker. 
back in the day that I, I tried to really go for the rocker aesthetic. Like I had like the, the, the spiky chokers and the black nails and the whole nine yards, bro. So like 10 years old in Canada, literally the only kid that age who knew anything about these bands. And I was totally an outcast. It was like, Oh, I was almost like a, a parody. Like, Oh, that's the rock and roll guy. That's so lame. But then when I was getting online, I'm talking about this and not only are, are other people like, relating to me but adults are relating to me and, and tuning into me and like you know all these kids are thinking I, I was lame for it but I was like well all the you know people older than them that they would listen to think it's cool and they get it so it was I remember I used to get made fun of at school because this you know they would make fun of me and say like oh well you don't have friends here you have friends in Germany from your podcast that's so lame but I always thought that was cool because they were <laughs> I was like the people in Germany are cooler than you so <laughs> 100 were your parents supportive yeah, they were very, very supportive, dude. I've been so blessed with my parents. Um, the first thing they said was, what the hell is a podcast? Uh, it, it was like NFTs or something back then. I tried to explain it. It's like they still didn't get it. <laughs> it's like nobody really got it back then. But yeah, they're so, so supportive. And yeah, just let me use their computer for it whenever they, they could. Always made sure that people I were, was reaching out to weren't creeps because I was a kid, you know? So yeah. they they really did their part to to support that and yeah always have man what was your first interview that you felt like oh shit this is real hmm i think it was the first one i did in person so that was with a group called these kids wear crowns and i that was my first time i ever went to a venue to do it and i remember we were outside there was a line of like 100 people and then their manager cut me to the front of the line and walked me in. And I, everybody was murmuring in line. And one of the people was like, I think he does interviews where he can go and talk to the bands. And I remember being like, whoa, like that, that's cool. Because again, I was always the outcast. I was always the kid at the back of the line, whatever. And I was like, oh, I'm being walked into the venue and just seeing them sound check and stuff. I was like, you know, it was a venue for a couple hundred people, but I might as well have been at Madison Square Garden. You know, I was like, my eyes were huge. And yeah, just going in and doing it. I remember I had a little laptop that I brought in and I had the, one of the mics from rock band <laughs> and I took like a foamy thing and I taped it onto the mic. So that it was a pop filter. And, uh, you know, I looked ridiculous, but I sat there with my little notepad at 10 years old and did it. And I mean, it was a Atlantic records artist. And I just remember it was just a feeling like I'd never had. And I was like, you know, this is something that could make me stand out and maybe make me get noticed for something I used to get made fun of for. So it, it really just clicked in that moment at 10 years old. That's crazy. Well, what, what were you asking? Like, what's your favorite crayon? Like, <laughs> yeah, I was just asking, like, you know, tell me about and I was trying to sound like Walter Cronkite or something like I was trying to sound super professional. I was like, tell me about your new single jumpstart trying to be all, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and the, the dude was high as as hell, by the way. Uh, like they had just smoked up like right before I walked in and the dude was like trying so hard not to laugh because he's got this kid thinking he's the, the new Larry King. You know, even though we know that's you. So, <laughs> <laughs> that shit's still so funny to me. I like that, man. You should run with that. <laughs> I should. Do you think at it, finding it at an early age helped, like, was beneficial because it now give it gave you, like, or do you feel like you weren't able to live enough? Hmm. I think of both, actually. Um, I, I mean, my entire life, I've been declining offers to hang out with people or to do this or do that. Cause I have to go do a podcast. Like I would literally, I had a buddy who would ask me to come over and before I could even say, it, he'd say, Oh no, you have to do a podcast. And you know, this is like in the seventh grade. So yeah, I mean, I've, I've sacrificed a lot of regular things through my teenage years and, and childhood years, but at the same time, I see it as a positive sacrifice because it, it got me to where I am today. You know, I, I, I'm sure I maybe could have probably made it happen, but I can't picture you know, starting in a different way because it just, it, it felt like it was always just what was meant to happen. And, and I never had the, the one positive about it is I never really had that crisis growing up of like, what am I going to, what do I want to do with my life? That's the one positive. That wasn't, there was never a question for me because it was always just something to do with the podcast. So that, you know, there's positives and negatives to that for sure. Yeah. I was asked this by someone I went to go speak at my college. And I was asked this, and I guess I want to ask you it because I asked this to someone else on the podcast, but I find it very interesting. Someone asked me, uh, 
if anyone could do what I do or if it's just because who I am, I can do what I do. Hmm. do and I, I want to, I'll answer it myself, but I want to hear what you feel about that. Man, that's interesting. You know, I, I think, I think each person, I think it has a lot of it has to do with who you are. It's, you know, everybody does have sort of qualities about them that are unique to them. And, you know, I think that can help you or hurt you depending on who's watching. But, you know, I think anybody could do it, but it just depends on what style, you know, I I don't think everybody's interchangeable. Like, sure, anybody could have a podcast as big as Rogan, but maybe they wouldn't connect with people as much because they aren't as quirky and and have such strange sort of unique interests. So, yeah, I think it's doable by the maybe the line share of people but i don't i don't think it's it's the same with everybody yeah because you said you, there was never a question for you and for me no. there was never a question either mm-hmm. and i hope that everybody in their mind has something that there's not a and you have to find it I'm not saying that everybody has it in the front of their head. Like, no. this is what I, you have to find it 100%. But that's why I'm so interested in you finding it so young mm-hmm. or me finding it in a stupid hockey accident, trying to impress a girl that had already dumped me for a deaf kid. <laughs> <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> it's and, I, and I'm a comedian. It's hurtful. Uh, <laughs> but like, I'm interested in that because I feel like that is some real knowledge. Like, how do people find that thing? No, I, I, I yeah, you really have to listen to yourself and you don't have to do DMT. That's not what yeah, I'm well, saying. you never know. I, I'll come back and let you know. No, but I think you really have to listen. You. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the thing, though. I mean, we mentioned stand up in the beginning, right? And like me trying it out. So I, I have no doubt in my mind that I could start going as a comic and I could definitely put the pieces together and make it happen. But I don't think, and again, maybe I'll become a comic. I'm, I'm not saying I won't, but I, I think that somebody else is better up there. So, so, you know, could anybody do it? Yes. But who should do it and who belongs there, I think is a different question. But there also aren't limited slices of the pie. Cause like mm-hmm. everyone can thrive doing their thing. Like, yeah. I the day I the day before I started this podcast, a group of 15 people told me not to do a podcast. Wow. Because there were too many podcasts Mm. and because like, like, oh, really, you're going to do it like blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I I, I I see where they are and I see where I am and I'm not judging them on that. But there's a reason that like you also should do what you want, not just not do it because you're like, oh, there's other people doing it too. No, I totally agree. I, I never think that you should not do something because you think there's there's too many involved. I just think that it's a matter of maybe knowing that some things you can do, but you may not get as far ahead because there's others with more of an aptitude for it. And so it's like, but you shouldn't let that stop you. You know, I think it's just a matter of being realistic. You know, I I, I think I'd have a lot better shot of, you know, getting big off podcasting than I would off playing basketball, for example. I could do it, but I, I think that this is probably a more realistic route. So I think it's about following what you love and also being honest with yourself. Like, how good am I at this? Because that, that is a factor, if you ask me. Do you want to be big? Like, is that your goal? To be, to be big? Yeah. I thought you said, do I want to be fake? I was going to say, no, I don't, I'm not planning on it. (laughs) No, do I want to be big? I think, sir. Yeah. I think anybody who's doing this and says they don't want to be big is probably lying. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I'd like to, I really just, I want to bring a different flavor to this. You know, there's a very specific ways that it's being done and there's sort of very specific personality types that are dominating the game. Uh, but there's a lot of people who are sort of hungry for something different. Um, and I think that's where I want to come in. Like, I, you know, I think anybody can can put out a product, but it's what is separating you from the other people that are putting out that product? And what are you offering to the listeners that other people are not? And so, yeah, that's that's sort of been the goal and, and playing with it in a bunch of different formats, you know? 
is it the you know there's no question that's kept you going have has there been like a moment where you've wavered or taken time off like there's been moments there's been moments i mean i think the weird thing that happened with me is that i defined my entire life with the goals i had around podcasting i wanted to interview X amount of people like Gene Simmons and, and collaborate with Joey Diaz and all these things. And all literally all of those goals I had, I had reached at a certain point. And I was, you know, like what, 20 or something. So I was very young. So it was almost like in a strange convoluted sense, because I didn't, you know, I didn't ask for a billion dollars. I just asked for some interviews. So everything I had ever wanted through from this, I had gotten at a certain point. And that was the point where I really started to feel lost because it was like, what next, you know? And the other goals that I had maybe were out of my reach at that time. So it was like, what, what else can I do that's in my reach? You know? And yeah, I, I think there's been moments where I was like, you know, is this still what I want to do? And I think when you're doing something for a decade, I think it's perfectly natural to have that thought, just a thought, do I still want to do this? But the answer has always been yes. And you have to question yourself. I think you have yeah. to give yourself that. I feel that because I've I would be I would l be lying if I said I didn't always want a podcast ever since I wanted to do stand up. Like I would be lying cuz that podcasting is what I was like obsessed with, but I didn't do it. I've only been doing this for like 19 months, maybe like a little over a year and a half. And you're good at it, man. Especially for 19 that. months. That's that's really impressive. But I also was obsessed with Rogan. Like I would mm. I wouldn't be lying if I said I listened to almost every episode he did from I think I started around episode 400 to mm. like, you know, I've listened. I studied him like yeah. a lot of my shit down to everything other than I don't have someone Google and shit. I like right. <laughs> pull that up. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Pull that up, Irish. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, but I have to question myself because it's like we're talking about getting personal like my ex the one who's the reason i like you know told like she was like you're too obsessed with griselda it's so funny <laughs> like no such thing no. <laughs> and it's like to last week i'm on stage with conway like rapping his lyrics but that's to the point where it's like it's exactly what you were saying where it's like you kind of have to question you're like in less than two years i've achieved stuff that i never thought i could but how do and I love it, and I'm not saying this any other way, but, like, that can't be my peak. Like, exactly. you know people who peak in high school. You know people who peak in college. Like, I don't want my peak to be 24 years old. I want, right. I don't want there ever to be a peak. So you kind of have to always be adjusting what your goals are and what, like, you think you can go out and accomplish. No, that's such a great point. Like, you look at any example, you know, like – you know, n not comparing humans to rats, but you look at the rat in the maze, you know, you give him the same maze to get to the cheese. He's going to get fat, lazy and bored. You know, yeah. it's just it's all across the board. Like you need new challenges. And yeah, it, it, I think it's a very strange thing because it, it on such a like a micro level feeling it because, you know, you hear of people who like get great riches and stuff and they still feel that way. You yeah. know, so I think it's also a lesson too that you know, you can't define yourself by what you achieve and when it, there has to be more deeper elements to it or else you can find yourself really quite lost at a certain point. And I, I wasn't really going to talk about this on the podcast, but I guess I will without going into detail. Like I was offered a pretty good sum of money for no ownership or no stake in it. And it was like in the works, it all happened. And I was more anxious than ever. And then it fell through. Hmm. And I feel like a freedom almost. It's like that hmm. the money causing anxiety. It's like it was so fun. Like, I don't know. I, it, 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 the happiness has to come from something else. The happiness, yeah. the chase, but also like being okay with the like silence. Like, I think hmm. that's what Joe Rogan talks about a lot is like, being okay with not your profession, like having things to do that you're okay in that off time. Oh man, it's it's so important. You know, yeah, I, I had something similar happen actually. Uh, I'm not sure if I can say, but like a major television company that makes kids shows uh, had approached 
somebody I'm working with and basically was like positioning themselves to potentially give me an offer. And basically what it said was this could be anything from like a TikTok to your own series. So I was like, okay, there's a lot in between there. Um, but I was thinking about it, man. And I was just thinking about all the creepy stuff that goes down with, with these kids who work on these shows and how they've treated a lot of people and slid things under the rug. And I was like, how can I sleep at night working for a company that I feel is so corrupt and stuff? And the offer fell through. And I got to tell you, man, you'd expect a guy to be sad. I was happy. I felt a huge weight off my shoulders that I didn't have to do it. I, you know, you, you probably heard the expression, God gives you what you can handle. I mean, whether you believe in God or not, you can replace it with universe. I firmly believe that's so that. Cra- that's that. literally what I say. And I know people but like, yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. I totally, I firmly believe that, that you're given what you can handle at the right time. And we don't know what decides that, but I sure as hell know we don't. Yes. And you also, it goes back to, and this might sound like we're beating a dead horse with this, or at least I might sound like I am. But it's like there shouldn't be an end. Like Mm -hmm. if a big offer falls through, who cares? You that's not is that your end? Like, is that your end? Like if a big guest is a dickhead or if like something doesn't work out, okay. You gotta keep moving. You have to have that mentality of just like if this is really what you want to do, if there is no question in your mind, then like that's it. Like you gotta keep going because I've been stood up. I've been shit. The Conway, he could have been two hours late and I could have never gone to the club and none of that shit could ever happen. But you just got to, you know, the four agreements, not take anything personal and just like really work to like. That's a great, great piece of advice to never take anything personal in this, whether it's views like nothing, dude, because it it is not personal. It's just it's a game that we're playing. And I don't think you should. People say don't hate the player, hate the game. I don't think you should hate either one. I just think you need to understand it. It's, it's nothing about hatred or love. Just know how to play the game. It's like if I put up a video that gets, you know, 50 views, it's not because people hate me. It's just because maybe it's not as entertaining as the other video I put up. Yeah. And that's OK. You know, just because like people need to get comfortable with looking themselves in the mirror and, and objectively judging what they're doing. It, nobody cares that you made it. They just care about what it is. So that's what people need to focus on. <laughs> that it's. That's so true. Yeah. Uh, Is there something like a moment in your mind that you like you feel I know that first interview when you're young, but like, what is that that you tell yourself like that you go back to maybe when you're questioning yourself? Probably uh, my interview with Gene Simmons. Um, That was just such a defining. It was just such a defining day for me because I fought all day to get that interview uh, it was at an expo and they, they, I had media for the expo and they firm because they knew I was a kiss fan. They knew I was coming. They said, you're not interviewing Gene Simmons. They said, nobody is. So just get that out of your mind. I said, okay. And I came day after day after day that day. I think I waited like at least eight, nine hours to finally get in touch with his publicist and just figure things out, you know, and, and I ended up sending an email to the kiss camp. Uh, some, somebody I knew he passed it to Gene and Gene responded saying, sure, I'd be happy to say hello. So then I got the media people on the phone. I said, yeah, I remember how I wasn't interviewing Gene. Actually I am. So, uh, that's going to happen. So they wouldn't try to throw me out. And then my camera guy bailed that day. So I actually went down, I set the whole thing up myself. I arranged it myself. I waited and I just pulled the whole thing off literally completely on my own. And like, it was just one of the most satisfying feelings ever because it just it showed that like you like you, you just you don't need a handout you don't need anything if you want it just hit the ground running and you can get it you know and that was that was one of the probably the biggest dream that's ever come true in my life that's so cool that you did it and it's funny how similar it is to the conway story of like you just have mm. to like for people listening or just like i want to stand up and like shake your hand for it. it's like not giving up even in the moment like even then yeah. you're like, oh, it might not work out. Oh, you exactly. know, what could happen? Nah, just stick through it. And that could be a life changing moment. That's the thing. And, and more often than not, it will be if, if there's that type of challenge. Like, yeah, I've had weird ones, too, where people barely show up like Afro Man. When he came here, we were supposed to interview him at like eight o'clock. It ended up being like 
three 30 in the morning outside his hotel and we're talking to him. But like, that was one of the funniest interviews in the world. He had like never been to Canada. He didn't know what Canada was. He's like, this is weird. You know? And yeah, it's just, you know, you gotta, you gotta, that's the thing though. It, it goes with the theme of it's never going to go how you expect it. You expect the interview at 10 at night with the rapper. I wouldn't expect that. Just go with the flow, have fun. It'll be cool. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. I feel like this is just kind of like we're, we're talking the same thing, but I hope people hear this, like understand what we're trying to, or what at least what I'm trying to portray. Or when people listen to your interviews, you're, I feel like you want, you want to like teach people too. Absolutely. No, I do. I, I think it's, it's, it's better to do it that way. And I think there's a lot of, investment from people in hiding like what they do and how they do it. And I don't necessarily see that as a benefit. Like I think people are interested. I think the process is content in and of itself. If you document the process, that can be just as interesting maybe as a finished product. So yeah, I think people, people should, if they open up about that, it probably works in their benefit. And as West Side Gun says, we've read the same book, but you didn't understand the message. Like, Hey, there you go. It's true. Like you can, I think that's what Rogan's podcast was the best for is because oh, yeah. I listen to Rogan and I get something, but someone else could listen to it and it's something else for them. But like, I understood what he was trying to portray. And I think you did too, by Absolutely. picking that up. And, uh, it changed my life for the better. And I don't really talk about it on this podcast a lot, especially because of like who he is now. Well, that's the thing now, now it's, 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 he's become like a sort of a cliche and, and which is great. You know, like if you become so mainstream that somebody brings you up and, and the people are like, Oh, not this guy's name again. I mean, that's good. Cause you're constantly being talked about, you know, I, I never, I never thought he would get as influential as he is. And I'm, but I'm glad to see it because what it makes what we're doing more legitimate. That's one less person who says, what's a podcast. Yeah. You know, and that's a huge thing. Like we don't have trailblazers, you know, I mean, uh, shout out to Logan Paul. But uh, I mean, if that's the biggest trailblazer next to Rogan, I think Rogan deserves the credit. <laughs> what? I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you listen to podcasts now? I do. I don't listen to them as much as I did, but I actually realized in 2021 that was a weak point for me. And that was one of the mistakes I was making as I wasn't in tune with what was popular today. I think that. If you're in any kind of field, you need to examine all of the biggest people in the, those fields, whether you enjoy their content or not. And I think the biggest tip is identifying what you think people are getting out of it. You can hate this guy's show, but watch it, study it, and come to a conclusion as to what they're doing that's drawing people in. And then do that for everybody at the top of the field, and then find out which one of the, these tactics is closest to something you can do. I think yeah. that's the best thing way to do it because it's so fun to hate and I do it too behind closed doors. It's fun. I used like, to do it a lot, but do it anymore, I don't do, I do it in jest cause I'm not, I'm a comedian. Like I right. like to sh shit talk like, and yeah. that's going to get me in trouble on this new show I have on Vivo where we review music where it's like, I have to really, my co-host really, I told him, I was like, you got to keep me under wraps. Like, yeah. I just, enjoy the shit talk and i don't even mean it i just do it because i'm a comedian but that's cool though or but but it's not to the point because i hate when people talk shit about mm -hmm. me like mean comments hurt my feelings and okay, i hope true enough do like do you look at comments like do they affect you um i don't think they affect me anymore honestly that i think it affected me earlier especially when i when i was younger and i first started getting like i mean first of all who writes a a hate letter to a 13 12 year old kid yeah that's true if they're doing it to you it's like fuck off Let's that's what i mean that it was it was hard to wrap my mind around the fact that there was grown men sitting in their house wringing their hands about a 12 year old um that was bizarre but no now see there's nothing someone can comment that will affect me i've been called every name in the book every insult in the book and i don't even care anymore yeah yeah i guess it's still my ego is a little bit like new to the public eye oh yeah dude it takes it takes years like like in my 12th year is when i became immune to that so it's like you know it's it's yeah it's i'm not gonna act like i never have and 
you know, it does suck. You know, you want people to enjoy what you're doing. I think that's that's human nature. Nobody puts something out to get a shit response. Yeah. But it's so funny because like someone will recognize me in public, which is insane. I still can't believe that happens in different states. And that's, that's fire. So cool. But then like someone will shit talk and that'll sit with me for like so much mm-hmm. longer. It's such a weird like the ego is such a weird thing for that. It is weird. Yeah, I try to. I try to keep it under control and yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, it's so much more to do with that person and where they're at that. Yeah. I almost don't, I almost feel like they're not even to blame. It's like, they're a victim of whatever's going on in their mind and they're projecting that because they just happen to see this video. But I, I think it kind of goes with the theme of not taking things too personal. Like that's that person's deal. And even when I've done it, like I've had times where I, I, one thing I used to hate on was super experimental new rappers like the Playboy Cardis and, and these. I used to say they were all trash. They were all terrible, this and that. And I ended up at, at one of their shows and I realized, like, I can say this is trash all I want, but these people are going to keep coming to these shows. And in this room, that's God right there. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what I say. And, and it's not important what I say. Because there's something actually going on. You know what I mean? So now I, I don't even hate on any artist because it's like, if you're bringing people in, you're making people happy. That's bigger than an individual opinion in my, in my view. You have a very, you're very even keeled for 23. It's cool to see. And I think, do you do things like, do you, do you get angry? Like, do you have, or do you work on things? Like, do you work out? Do you meditate? Do you think do things to keep I'm trying to get up. healthy in terms of diet and nutrition right now. The workout's coming because I'm, I'm still rebounding from my concussion here and there. Um, yeah, mine lasted like, yours. I'm sorry. I didn't ask earlier. No, man, it's all good. I, I, I just gotten like just some weird random, like biking thing, but the, the, I had had a very minor concussion a year ago and just the way that I was impacted, it lasted like, I mean, I'm at, six months now and i still am dizzy some days but for the first four months i was done dude did you, you have know? to take a break from work like interviews and all that yeah i had to take a couple weeks off watch mojo my my show went dark for a couple weeks and like yeah i was fucked up man like seriously but riding your bike yeah just just the way the way it happened the way i i came off of it and the angle it just it was just bad luck you know, and uh, uh, I, I got in a really bad uh, hit. My hit a pothole on my bicycle ooh. and I wasn't wearing a helmet and I didn't hit my head. But I was so I like I was scared to ride my bike for like a month and a half, two months after that. Like I didn't want to get back on. Dude, it, it's no joke. And and yeah, like that, that type of thing can can teach you. But no, to answer your question, like I think it's just one of those one of those things of, of time and, and just sort of examining things. I feel like I'm, I'm at a better place than I was. I used to let things bother me a lot and I just try not to now, mm-hmm. you know, but I'm not, I'm no, I'm no Buddha, you know, think things get to me too. <laughs> do you smoke? Uh, cigarettes? Weed. I, I do smoke weed. Yeah. All but right. not anywhere near as much as I used to. I used to be stoned like 24 seven. I used to do every podcast pretty much stoned um like just constantly and i don't really do that anymore i've found a lot of peace in getting more in touch with my just regular mind i I would always be doing that on the weekends i'd like to drink and you know have a couple beers after work or whatever and i just like i I was getting too comfortable with that and kind of like not knowing who i really was like i wasn't really having a dialogue with my regular self enough Mm. Um, and ever since I tape tame that down a lot, um, I'm feeling, I just feel a lot better and a lot more e- even mentally. How old were you when you started smoking? I was 14. Yeah. Yeah. I was on the younger side, man. And, and it was one of those things like I've never had another drug except for, you know, microdosing here and there, but like, it was like, I smoked it and I was like, yeah, this is it, chief. I was just like, this is what I got to keep doing. And, you know, it's never really held me back. But I just think even Rogan has said it, you know, he's like, you don't want to be altered all the time. Like you need to have some time to communicate with your regular self. And it's tough in the entertainment world because the backbone of comedy, music, all this stuff is mostly like with the audience 
getting fucked up and the performers yeah. getting fucked up. Like, you know, so it it's weird, man. You got to slay your own dragon when it comes to that in this world. 100%. That's why I try not to. That's why I hate that I've been getting even one drink at shows recently or two drinks at shows. Cause it's like, I would smoke, I would give myself that, but like, I would never drink before I gave got on stage. And now I'm kind of right. like, I feel like I've been loosening my morals recently. Like I've been eating mm. unhealthy. I haven't, I've been sleeping in. I haven't been doing this working out as much like, and I blame it on working hard, but I think it's just loosening my morals. I think it's resistance. Right. I think you have to give yourself a certain set of rules. And it's like, well, I'm still releasing three episodes a week. Like I'm still doing that. So I can eat McDonald's three days. In right. Row, <laughs> exactly. You know, and that's like, that's not how it works. Cause life has to keep moving you know like if that's really what you want to do then you have to also work your other life around it yeah and it it, it is tough you know it, but and and it's such an individual thing I, I feel like people spend a lot of time looking up tactics or looking at what other people did and again it's good to take pieces from that but if there was a one size fits all way to improve yourself, everyone would be doing that. I mean, yeah. sure, maybe eating healthy and working out could be one size fits all. But it, the what you know, the intricacies of that for each person are very different. And I think you got to care enough about yourself to advocate for yourself to find what that is for you. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Man, this is awesome. This is a great conversation. When do you do you can you leave Canada right now or there? Honestly, dude, I, I'm not even going to try. It, it seems like such more of a hassle. Like, I want to go travel to relax and get things done. And it seems like more of a chore to travel right now because yeah. Canada is insane right now. Uh, so, yeah. But, I, I mean, I definitely, I got New York is in my sights, dude. I got, like, a couple other people who I've, I'm connected with out there. And you might I, move I'm to anxious. Austin. What's that? I said you might move to Austin. I might move to Austin. I mean, I'm thinking about it, dude. It's just... Right now, I want to get out of Canada. I don't like I don't have any hate. I love everybody here just in terms of what I want to do with my life. And also some of the in light of some of the current stuff, I just don't want to be here. You know, yeah. so the States is. Yeah, probably it's crazy. The, the lockdown shit. I've been seeing videos and stuff about like, the curfews and everything that that type of stuff and just those aspects of it go, going too far is is what i think is happening here yeah. you know like i'm all for masks wash your hands blah 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 all this stuff six feet um get get vaccinated if you want it all this stuff but i think there's a limit like once you start passing that in quebec they just announced that they're going to be having some form of tax for people who don't have the vaccine so they're actually going to be taxing them out the ass for anything they want to do and i'm like when there's 10 percent of people who don't have a shot that, first of all, that's a small percentage. And second of all, we don't know why they don't have it. Like, there are yeah. a lot of health issues. Yeah, there's some people who literally can't. So, yeah. That's the thing. So, yeah, like, I, I don't... I've been going through this thing and uh, through this whole pandemic where I've kept, kept my mouth shut just completely because people are so hair-triggered. But I kind of got to a point, like, looking at what they're doing around here and, like, forcing fully vaccinated people to go to quarantine hotels. Like, stuff like that it just doesn't make any sense. Um, I... I thought of myself at like 90 years old sitting in a hospital thinking about my life and i was like if i look back to a time where there was actual real shit going on that i see as an injustice in the world how could i live with myself if i just sat there and smiled to make my life easier it just doesn't sit right with me you know so yeah i mean i'm against those extra measures and i think it's good to remind people right now that you're allowed to have an opinion and it doesn't have to be the popular one yeah yeah, because you're so I I feel that you're scared to like say how you feel because you don't know how anyone reacts, no matter what their opinion is. People are so quick to just get as a take it that take don't they take anything personal. That's what we we're talking about before. Like people are so quick to take opinions as personal attacks. Yeah, and, and, and they're quick to take asking a question as giving a stance. Like you can be the most pro vaccine person in the world. You can still ask questions about the vaccine, for example, just because you're asking questions about it. That doesn't mean you're necessarily don't want it, don't have it, or don't think people should get it. You know, it's like people are afraid to ask questions. If you're asking questions that you, you're not going along with the narrative. And I don't agree with that. You, you, to, to think you need to be questioning things. 
and I'm like vaxxed, boosted, and I have a lot of friends who aren't at all. Like, don't, and it's, I don't know why. I, it's like, I know people who would like, they're like, how the, how the heck could you hang out with them? It's like, <laughs> It's insane, you know, and it's just it's I saw the meme that Elon Musk posted a dude with his vaccines and a dude without them. And they both have the thought bubble saying, why aren't they dead yet? You know, that's the thing. I don't believe in that type of hyper polarization. There needs to be more balance. One hundred percent. But, man, I I hope to meet you in uh, person sooner rather than later. Likewise, man. I really appreciate you doing this. I I respect everything you've done. I I uh I want to thank you for everything you've done for such a long time and uh thank you. I appreciate man. you coming on for real. No, that really means a lot, dude. And and just keep doing what you're doing. Like I say, like you're killing it. You're you're really onto something great here. Like I know people who've been doing it a lot longer than you and they don't have nearly that natural feel that you have and yeah, really great chatting with you, man. Definitely. Thank you, man. And it's so funny. The Irish connection is just really it's such a funny like small world, you know. Dude, it's so weird. I did a podcast right before this and I brought up a mutual friend that me and that guy had and suddenly he jumped out of the background. So like the, literally the same thing. <laughs> that is so fun. Right <laughs> <laughs> but uh, cool, man. Have a good rest of your night and, uh, you know, we'll talk soon. <laughs> yeah, man. When do you think this is going up? Uh, this will probably be next week, probably next Friday. Sick. Okay, I'll, I'll post the hell out of it everywhere, man. And uh, keep in touch. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Thank you, man. I'll talk to you later. All right, take care.